Let's talk about retiring early and what you need to do if you want to retire early. Because not everyone wants to make the sacrifices when it comes to retiring early. You think, I just want to make a ton of money and then I'm going to retire early. But what about for everyone else who's working hard, saving, investing, growing their nest egg? How can you retire early? Well, I want to show you a strategy that I'm currently working on with a client on how he is already retired and he's 49 years old. And I want to share that with you so maybe you can use this same strategy or a strategy similar to it to help you retire early early. Hey, welcome back to the Your Financial EKG YouTube channel. My name is Drew Blackson. I'm a certified retirement counselor, investment advisor representative. I'm your virtual financial advisor, helping you get to retirement, helping you get through retirement, and protecting your ability to stay in retirement. That's what we're talking about today. Protecting your ability to stay in retirement because we don't want to retire early and then 15 laters have to go back. So I'm going to show you some of the details on how this client is retiring at 49. And then at the end of this video, or really towards the middle, we're going to go into the software and I'm going to show you exactly what we're doing so that you can implement this in your life or you can call me and we can do this together. All right. So how to retire early. Here we go. Chris is 49 years old and he's retiring. Uh, Chris has $1.8 million in retirement investments or retirement savings. Now, out of that $1.8 million, $46,000 is taxable, meaning that's post-tax. He's already paid taxes on that money. He can use it anytime he wants. There's no penalty for taking any of that money out. He just pays taxes on capital gains and interest. Now, the problem is the rest of this money, $1.7 whatever, is in 401ks and IRAs. And Chris is 49 years old. So you know, because you're watching this channel, that if you have a 401k and an IRA, you are limited to how you can take distributions before the age of 59 and a half. There's a couple rules we've talked about on the channel before. The first is the rule of 55. So if you want to access your 401k early, you can use the rule of 55. Now here's what the rule of 55 says. If you're working at your job in the year that you turn 55, you can leave your job, retire, be terminated, and you can use your current 401k for retirement income. Not an old 401k, not your IRA, but your current 401k for retirement income. Now, this doesn't apply to Chris because he's 49. He's retiring early. He's retiring before 55, so we can't use the rule of 55. There's also a rule called 72T, and it's basically taking substantially equal periodic payments out of your IRA for five years or age 59 and a half, whichever is longer. Now, I'm not a huge fan of 72Ts because you have to follow them to the T, because if you don't follow the rules for the 72T down to the decimal, the IRS says all those penalties that you avoided in the past, you're going to pay them now, and you're going to pay them all right now. So if you did a 72T for five years and you messed it up in year six, they're going to make you pay the penalty for all six years. So we need to look at rules or we need to look for a way, a strategy that Chris can retire right now using his $1.8 million and his $46,000 taxable. Now, here's where Chris is different. Chris is going to do a sacrifice. He's willing to give something up to achieve his dream of retiring early. Chris has a home that's got $300,000 in equity. And so what he's going to do is he's actually going to sell his house, take the equity from the house, and he's going to move into a rental. And what he's going to do is use this $300,000 in income or in uh, home equity, it, you know, what he gets for selling his house, he's going to use that to bridge the gap from 49 to 59 and a half. His income need is $3,600 a month. So we need $3,600 per month and we want to bridge to 59 and a half. All right, let's go through this retire early scenario. And I'm going to do two different scenarios for you. I'm gonna, first one I'm going to do is on the board. And I just want to do simple math. Is it going to work? Does it make sense to retire early? And then the second scenario is going to be the more detailed using the software to get the Your Financial EKG. And if you're thinking about retiring early, you need to make sure that you have a retirement income plan that works on the board and also works in the software with all the different variables. And I would be happy to do that for you if you contact me in the description below. Now, let's look at this. 
So we've got $300,000 from the sale of our home. We've got $1.8 million in 401ks and IRAs, all right? Now the $300,000 is what we're gonna use for income since he's 49 years old. This is money that doesn't have any restrictions on it. The only taxes he'll pay on it are capital gains, interest, and dividends. So we wanna to try to stay away from this 1.8 as much as possible because we don't wanna to try to set up any kind of 72T schedules. We don't wanna set up any rule of 55s because that means he'd have to go back to work and do reverse rollovers. We don't wanna do that. We just wanna to try to bridge the gap from 49 to 59 and a half. Well, taking out $3,600 a month, just a base case scenario, 4% rate of return on the money in the market. So the money in the market's earning 4%. 3% inflation on the $3,600, and he runs out in eight years. So it gets him from 49 to 57. So at 57, we're out of money over here. We're out of this 300,000. We've spent it all. But now we've got 1.8 million that's been growing for eight years. It's been earning 6% rate of return. So the 1.8 has grown to 2.9. So now at 57, We've got $2.9 million to start living off of for retirement. So at 57, we're gonna to go to 67 for Social Security. So we basically have about 10 years now to bridge from how much retirement income we need at 57 to getting to Social Security and then needing more retirement income because of inflation. And so the question becomes, do we do a 72T? Do we just take out money from our IRA and, and pay the penalty? Doesn't matter. How long is our income going to last? And that's everything that we're going to look at in the next section of this video using the detailed software that you need if you're thinking about retiring early. Hey, let me cut in real quick here because if you're thinking about retiring early, if you're thinking about using your IRA, your 401k, any kind of taxable vehicle for retirement income, make sure you talk to your CPA, your tax accountant, call me, talk to your financial advisor to make sure that you're doing what is in your best interest. All right, let's look at Chris's scenario and how he's able to retire early. And I believe this is a strategy that if you're young enough or maybe you're in your 40s and 50s, this is a strategy that you can implement if you're wanting to actually retire early and do the things that it takes to retire early. So let's look at this. This is Chris and he is retired. So we have him retired and he is 49 years old and nine months. So we're retired at 49. We've retired early. Now we're going to start Social Security in the scenario at 67 years old, which is Social Security at that point would be $3,091. Now the reason we're doing it at 67 is at the current moment, Chris is single. And so as he goes through life, we want to try to increase the amount of his social security because it would be like having an added pension. He doesn't have any pensions. All of his retirement income is going to come from his retirement investments, his retirement investing, and his retirement savings. So if we can get a pension or like an annuity type payment as large as possible for him, that's only going to benefit his retirement income, especially in the future. So we're going to try to delay social security as long as possible. Possible. Now, there could be a scenario where Social Security needs to be taken earlier. If the stock market has a lot of volatility, it has some down years, it has sequence of return risk, meaning multiple down years uh, in the market, then we might turn on Social Security at 62, at 63, at 64 to try to give some relief to his, to his retirement investments and his retirement income. Because if everything's coming out of his retirement investments and they're all going down, we need to try to push, you know, pull that plug or stop that plug or stop the leak or something. So use Social Security in order to do that. But for the scenario in a perfect world, we're gonna try to wait to 67 for that. Now, if he waits till 70, he'll get 124% of his full retirement benefit, which would be even better. So if the market is really roaring and his retirement income is sustaining his lifetime or his lifestyle, then yeah, we might just wait till 70 to start taking social security. Now from an asset standpoint, let me just scroll down here. We've got $2.1 million in total assets, all right? So that's the 1.8 million that I talked about on the board, plus that's the 300,000 that he just got from the sale of his home. Now remember, the way he's retiring early is he sold his home, he had, he's, he's received $300,000 in home equity, now he's renting. 
And so he's using his $300,000, his non-qualified money, to live off of. Because at 49, if he uses his IRA or his 401k, he's going to pay a 10% penalty unless he does like a 72T. So we're trying to stay away from doing a 72T, and we're trying to use this $300,000 for as long as possible. All right? So the rates of return that his money is getting in the market, let, let me show you that too. So everything in the market's getting a 6% rate of return except for the 300,000. So we're only going to do a 4% rate of return on that. And the reason I want to do such a low rate of return on that money is because he's using that for income. So that money is going to be invested very conservatively. Remember, the S&P 500 has averaged 8% since 1950. We're going to go to 6% on everything else, which is 2 percentage points behind the 8%. And we're going to go 4 percentage points behind 8% for the money that's conservative that he's using for retirement income. Because what we don't want to do is run out of retirement income too early and have to start tapping those IRAs and 401ks way too early because we got too aggressive on the investments. All right. So we're going to use 6% and then 4% on the home or on the money that we got from the sale of the home. And as you can see from a tax classification standpoint, 81% of his money is qualified. It's all IRA, 401k. So we've only got about 19% of his total assets or his total retirement savings are in non-qualified or taxable money that you can get to at any time without any kind of penalty or stipulations. Now, keep in mind, there are taxes like capital gains taxes, interest taxes, dividend taxes uh, on that money, but not ordinary income and penalties. Now, from an expense standpoint, $3,500 is kind of the final number we've got on expenses. It could be a little higher, it could be a little lower per month, but we're just going to hone in on $3,500. And we can change that as well. I'll show you. We'll come back to this and I'll adjust his expenses to show you how that works from a retirement income standpoint. So make sure you hang on till the end because we're going to do some multiple scenarios here because I want you just to see not just the perfect scenario, not just the scenario that works, but I want you to see all the scenarios and how this works. Now, from a cash flow standpoint, this is where, as a financial advisor, I'm asking him, like, what do you want to do in retirement? What are your goals, your dreams? And so from a cash flow standpoint, he wants to travel. And so we're going to put an annual travel expense in. Right now, it's at $5,000 on an annual basis. We've got to do two of these because we're taking it from multiple different investment vehicles. The first one is going to be from that $300,000 from his home sale. So we're still, even though he's selling his home and renting, and even though he's taking his budget down to the bare bones so he can retire early, he still wants to have that $5,000 a month or a year budget for travel. And so that's built into the plan because... If you're going to retire, you want to enjoy yourself, right? We don't want to just eat pork and beans. Taxes. Here's where it gets really interesting because most people say, oh, he's going to pay a lot in taxes because he's going to take money out of his IRAs, 401ks, and penalties and all that. Maybe. And we're going to get to taxes in more detail. But for 2022, his current projected federal tax rate is only 6.71. Let's go to 2023, which is a whole year of income. His projected federal rate is still only 8.53%. So, I mean, he's got a $50,000 taxable withdrawal, $12,000 single deduction, $37,000 in taxable income. You know, he's, he's still doing really, really good. So we're not necessarily worried. He's 8.53%. And I'm going to show you how that goes up as the years go on. But let's go to retirement first. I want to show you how long his retirement income is going to last because I think that's the key. And then we go back to all the, all, all the details. So from a retirement standpoint, just strictly his expenses, his cash flows, and the amount of money that he's got. Listen, he never runs out of money. Projected rate of return rate of return is adequate, meaning that we we're projecting enough rate of return for him to last the rest of his life. You know, at 80 years old, there's like $6 million, meaning we've put inflation on those net monthly expenses. So at 80, his, his expenses are at $9,281 now. But his assets are still at $6.7 million. There's that travel expense every year. And obviously that's going to get inflated. That's going to change. But let's go back to taxes because that's really what we're honing in on here. We're honing in on taxes and we're honing in on do we, how long can that $300,000 last and what's the penalty and taxes going to be on that? So when we do this, 2028 is where he runs out of that $300,000. Okay, so that's the year that the $300,000 is completely gone. We started taking it out in the year 2022 because he retired at 49 in 2022. We started using that $300,000 for income and by 2028, it's out. 
But let me show you his taxes still. So his gross distribution, $62,000. That's the inflation on his expenses and income's gone up. He's still in the projected federal tax rate of 10.34%. So let me show you how this works. If we go to his annual tax, look at this. His annual tax is really, really low up until about 2044 when he has to start taking his required minimum distribution. That's where we can start looking at some Roth conversion strategies and things like that, which we can do after he's 59 and a half. I don't really want to do it right now, but at this point, we can maybe we can do it a little earlier, but I'm going to look after, after age 59 and a half. But man, look at all these low tax brackets, and he's still able to retire early. He's still taking out money from his in, from his IRA after the year 2028. We've got two more years till he's 59 and a half, and it's really not hurting him at all. If we go to retirement, and so let's go to the year 2028 real quick. Or let's go to year 2029. If you come down here and you click on additional taxes owed, see how he has a penalty of $6,771. So he has $14,435 in total taxes of which almost double that is from the penalty. So then the question becomes at this point, do we do the 72T to try and lower the taxes, but if you're taking out substantially equal periodic payments, you're probably going to pay that amount of taxes anyway. So in his case, we've got about two years before he reaches age 59 and a half. So it really doesn't make sense to set up some schedule, some 72T schedule, and pay these extra taxes and be forced to do that for five years or longer, 59 and a half or whatever, um, or just pay the penalty and, and be okay with that. And so that's really the question we have to come down to because, again, when you look at, let me close this out, if you look at his assets, really, it doesn't ever hurt him. His assets continue to grow. So even paying the penalty doesn't hurt his overall assets. And if you remember right, let's go back to taxes real quick. If you look at his, his cumulative taxes over time with the penalties involved, I mean, it's not... It's really 2044 is when his taxes really kick up because of the RMD, cumulative tax right there. I mean, again, look how low this is all the way to about. That's when the RMD kicks in, the 2044. So in this guy's case, we need to really be looking at Roth conversion strategies and not necessarily worried about the 10% penalty for pulling money out of his IRA or 401k early. Okay. So I hope this has helped. If you want to retire early, listen, you need a financial plan. You need a financial EKG. And I would be happy to do that for you in the comment section below is a download that you can get for free. It talks all about retirement income, but then that's the way you get in touch with me. You check the box and say, yes, I want to meet with you. And we can go through a retirement income strategy to make sure that you get to retirement through retirement and you're protected protecting your ability to stay in retirement. Thank you so much for watching. God bless. Bye-bye. Hey, let me interrupt this very important video to encourage you to enroll in the new course, Can I Retire? presented by Your Financial EKG. This course is absolutely free and helps you to determine if you are ready to retire. All the information is below. See you in the classroom.